And now we got to talk about what Montgomery County is doing to crack down on fentanyl use and student use. Today, in today's Washington Post, there's a very tragic story about a young man whose brother died of taking a you know fake Percocet pill, which was laced with fentanyl. And you know he's a senior at Whitman High School, and, and his brother died from this. There were 48 overdoses in 2022 compared to 27 in 2021. So it's shocking that you know that you know the rampant drug use in our public schools is so pervasive. Jim, the new plan that's been announced is to monitor how long and when students can be in the bathroom. With your long background in law enforcement, is that sufficient? No, it's not, Casey. This is not a school issue to me. This is a criminal case. Fentanyl distribution or use is criminal, and people, kids die. We need a police officer at the schools. The SRO program should be reinstated. Uh, it's a police matter. Somebody who is taught or, or found dispensing this stuff uh, should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. It's, only, it's like an attempted murder. You give someone a pill with fentanyl, I mean, they could die. So this has to be treated as a police matter. The schools, but, isn't it a, can, but is it a situation that the, that the schools can, can do something about, or is it a, a larger issue that has to be addressed by uh, law enforcement and even on a national level, not a, not, a, not a local community level? Nancy, the other major initiatives that we're talking about is to encourage all all, all households to have, you know, the life-saving drug Narcan on hand, hand to stop overdoses. Isn't this just an admission of defeat that we don't know what to do? It's so pervasive. Uh, well, we don't know what to do. I mean, it is an admission. Certainly it's a problem and it's a deep-seated problem, apparently. I don't know uh, how well-informed the uh, school community is about this. I would think that parents should be on guard and are warned about this. Uh, you know, kids have always been drinking. They've been taking drugs and whatever since the beginning of time. We all know that. Uh, teenagers misbehave. There's no question about that. And I don't disagree that it's a, a criminal matter for the um, police and the courts in terms of distribution. The issue is dealing with the product of that. And what does the school system do as, um, in, what is the term uh, in parental, lo what is the term, uh, Jim? In, parental in local parentis. Yeah, local parentis. They're supposed to be acting as the parent, but the parent of Mon in Montgomery County has very different views about how their child should be handled. That's one of the challenges of, uh, that the schools face in dealing with this. Well, there's uh, really, there's I, no question as I see that it, this is a serious there, there are really two very different issues. Well, you know, one is, you know, the, you know, if, if like in the instance of the young boy from Whitman, where his brother took a, uh, an illegal drug, but which was laced with fentanyl, you know, that's a question of teaching them about drug use and, and, and they shouldn't be taking Percocet, let alone Percocet laced with fentanyl. But, but this, the fentanyl issue, is really a problem. And yeah. I don't know if education enough is going to solve that problem to prevent, as, as you said, Nancy, kids have been taking illegal drugs for, well, since the 70s, they've been smoking marijuana in, in the bathroom, so. Yeah, they've been doing Casey, something. Casey, you know, you use the word the problem. It's not a problem. Well, yes, it is a problem, but it's a crime. It's a crime to use and distribute fentanyl. And these offenders in the schools have to be thrown out of school. They can't be in the classroom with other kids anymore, out of school, and it's a, they should be prosecuted. I mean, someone who distributes or gives another kid fentanyl should be in jail, not a classroom. And I, why, why don't we wake up to the fact that there are bad kids, good kids, are, are, they could lose their life. It's a crime. Let's call this a crime problem. And it has to be dealt with like that. Well, I, I don't know if that's, I mean, I don't know if, if by, by requiring that the bathroom doors be kept open is treating it like a crime, Jim. It seems like they just are trying to, to keep kids from, you know, uh, engaged in, in illicit behavior. Well, I, I go back to the fact there should be a police officer in there uh, to monitor all this. They know the kids that give them information. 
we need the police in the schools, no matter if it's politically correct or not, we got to save our kids' lives. This is a big deal. This is not, uh, you know, kids do graffiti. People can die, and we have to treat it like that. Nancy? It's not like the police officers are going to be hanging out in the girls' restroom. Uh, remember, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, the police present, well, I don't know if the presence would make a difference. There are, historically, there, there are corners in a school, in a, in a public building, where bad things happen. That's always been the case. So I'm not sure that there's one simple solution to all of this, but I do agree uh, that certainly uh, understand finding out who's distributing this stuff and where it's coming from should be a major priority uh, of the police and should be a focus uh, in Montgomery County. Well, there, there certainly seems to be a huge problem in our in the schools and from the use of illegal illegal drugs and. It's, it's a real concern, obviously, because it's, it's not, you know, just a harmless somebody smoking a joint, if that's, if you want to call that harmless, it's somebody's, somebody's life who's um, in, in, been in danger. Mm -hmm.